Hey, hello, and welcome to Good Knit Kisses. I'm your host, Kristen, where we stitch our love and love our stitches. If you're joining me on the replay, I'm so glad that you did. Be sure and click to subscribe if you haven't already and hit the bell icon notification so you get notified when I go live. Uh, welcome to all my live people jumping on. Be sure and uh, say hello. I may not respond as much while I'm doing the demonstration, but I am doing this live here. It's uh, two o'clock Fridays is when I normally go live Eastern at 3 p.m. Central. Got started a couple minutes late today, a little technical difficulty, but we're rolling. So um, be sure and hop on and tell me hello. If you have made the crochet baby blanket before, let me know. If you've had questions on it, um, it's uh, I'm sure you have. <laughs> We've had, this is one of my most popular um, crochet uh I don't have as many crochet videos, but it's one of my most popular ones, and I get questions on resizing, using different hooks, using different yarn. So I wanted to go and show you several different samples and show you how to change that up. Uh, I've got, got my hooks ready. I've got several, in fact, different gauges and different samples for you. So I'm going to jump in and show you those things. If you want to try and crochet with me live, go for it, but I'm really just going to be showing you some things, and then I'll give you some links. They're in the description of all the different ones. So we'll throw those in uh, later on into the comments. And uh, Joanne at the helm with Good Knit Kisses will be throwing in some of those. Uh, hello, everyone. Be sure and say hi again um, as we jump on. And this will be available as a replay later so you can see that. Um, welcome, everyone. I'm going to say hi to a few of the, uh, the live viewers. Hey, Gayla and Heather. And Benny's, hello, hello, Benny's. <laughs> Hi, Jennifer. How are you guys? I'm uh, glad that you are here. Hi, Willa. Hey. All right. So as I said to everybody, um, for the replay viewers, when they first top on, um, I'm Kristen at Good Knit Kisses, where we stitch our love and love our stitches. I'm glad that you're joining me today. And we are, we have got, um, crochet today. So I don't do as much crochet, but it, this has been a highly suggested thing that I do. So I'm here for you. So that's what we're doing. So I want to show you a couple of samples and, um, and then actually work on some of the stitches. So I'm going to flip my camera and adjust. Oh, sorry. I'm hitting my stuff already. <laughs> hey, Angie, I see you jumping on. Oh my gosh, my chair won't scoot around. <laughs> having a little bit of a difficulty this morning okay um let me get this all set up you guys talk amongst yourselves while i get it set up um pardon me while well, this is a live video so it's not like i'm editing it later <laughs> so it's a little harder to flip it um i had to get everything ready to get that uh thumbnail <laughs> So um, I'm going to show you, actually, I'm going to hold up a couple of the, because um, they're going to be off camera a little bit. I'm going to show you some of the yarn I'm going to be using because everybody wants to know what kind of yarn we're using, right? Okay, I think I've got all this set up. Okay, so number one, you may have seen me work it in, that's a big glare, isn't it? You may have seen me work with um, Bernat Blanket yarn. Um, <laughs> this is Bernat Baby. Uh, Bernat blanket and normally I work it with this um, eight millimeter uh, L hook but I do work it in other <laughs> in other hook sizes um, I have it listed on my website using I believe it's a J hook as an alternate size but you can also use an H so here's one and I'm actually gonna demo with this one today but I've got several others to show you so here is a sample of the marshmallow crochet baby blanket now this is obviously a smaller sample and you could even make a lovey out of this it feels amazing <laughs> It is, um, this is Red Heart Soft that I'm using, okay? So it feels really, really good. This is an H hook, and the, um, oh, where's my H hook? It's a five millimeter H hook. So this is what it looks like. It has this really cool bubbly texture on it. And I nicknamed it Marshma Marshmallow several years ago because it reminded me of marshmallows. It's technically called a textured stitch. So um, yeah, so we're going to get into that. And that's that one. I want to show you what it looks like in this 
Karen cakes, cotton cakes. <laughs> so Karen cotton cakes. So this is made out of cotton. And the reason, uh, the other reason why I want to show you this at this time is as of the recording, uh, we are in um, the spring and people may not want to work with this Bernat blanket yarn, real big, thick yarn. You want something light for the summer, right? Well, how much lighter can you get? Let's go with cotton. So the cotton cakes are really nice. They're nice and soft. And of course it's cotton, so it's really breathable. And this is working with the same hook that I did on this other medium weight yarn. So the hook size that's recommended on here is an H hook. And so this is what it looks like in this hook. Now the nature of how the stitch goes, it will have a couple little holes in it. And uh, so every other row, if you see a bump here and a bump here on the other side, I'll have a bump on the opposite row. All right, now I wanna show you the same Karen cake, same one. Bumping up the hook size a lot. So this is just to show you what it would look like if you bumped it up and you can get this cool lacy effect like that. And so for a summer top or maybe you want to create a cover up or something and you're looking for a new stitch that you haven't seen before um, in a cover up, um, it's got a little bit of a bumpy texture. Uh, the... This hook that I used is a, oh my gosh, my bifocals. This is a P hook. Is that a P hook? It's a J hook. That's not a J hook, is it? Let's check. I have a gauge uh, thing here. Okay. So this is a, this is like a, a 10 millimeter. Okay. So a 10 millimeter hook. See, it's pretty big. Now that I dropped my gauge <laughs> deal. It's hard to read this on the side here, but that's what I thought it was. Or it's a P. It's hard to read it. Anyway, whatever 10 millimeter is. So sorry. Okay. So I use that on this one. And yes, they've got the Karen cakes. I got this just yesterday at Michael's. Now, um, it was on sale. I didn't say clearance. So I'm going to tell you that it's there because last I heard in the summer, they were coming back out with them anyway. So yes. <laughs> <laughs> what I was at Yarn Inspirations. So there's that one. And then I'm going to show these to you up close and personal. Okay, here's the last one I want to show you. I also went to something that is a size one yarn. So this yarn here is a four. And I went all the way down to a one. So we went all the way from a, is this a five or a six? Okay, so this was a super bulky five. Going all the way down to a one. This is called... It's a wrap by Red Heart. And so it's really thin. And the, the hook size that they recommend on this one is a 3.25 D hook or, um, well, a D3. So 3.25 millimeter. And that is this little guy. Okay. So I use that on there. And um, what can I say about that? So let me show the sample. I started making this one more like if I want to inc keep increasing it like a shawl. And I do have a scarf video on the same one that shows you how you can make increases. So look at that. What do you guys think of that? Now you could also, um, I didn't get time to change it or not, and I can show you a close up of this, but you could even up the size. Um, I started to up it all the way up to that 10 millimeter size um, to see what it would look like really lacy, but you could up it up even, even to like an eight millimeter and have a really nice lacy shawl that would work up really quickly. So um, let's get to it and we'll flip this camera over. Okay. Let's see if we have any questions before I do. Hi, everyone popping in. <laughs> I see a couple of people jumped in. Hey, Patricia from Minnesota. How are you? All right, let's uh, flip this guy over. Get some lighting. Okay. So here is the sample that I just made. Okay, and this is working with this D hook here, 3.25 millimeter, and it's a very thin number one yarn, okay? And so how you size it, the, the quick answer is you can use anything that I, any yarn that you want to use with the hook you want to use, obviously anytime, right? Uh, to get it to the proper gauge for making this stitch, um, you can use the same one that's recommended on the packaging. That's not always the case um, sometimes. 
uh, depending upon what you're working on. Uh, this one right here, the Karen Cakes, did recommend the H Hook. Let's see which one was recommended in the Red Heart Soft. This one, oh, that's right. This one um, was um, an I Hook. So usually um, I go down a hook size, either the same hook size or one down. Let's see, Bernat normally recognizes an L um, or 11, which is an eight millimeter. So that's what I use on that one. It's this one here. Um, it doesn't matter the brand. This is just what I use. And in fact, on this chenille type, I like the plastic hook. I think it, um, I don't know, I think it works better for me when I do that one. Okay, so I used on this one an H hook, which is this one. So I use this hook, H hook. I tried to use different ones so you could kind of tell the difference what I was saying instead of like all one brand. If I used, if I used my whole set that looked like this, y'all be like, which one did she use? <laughs> so this orange one here is my H hook five millimeter. And I worked on Karen, uh, Karen Cakes and Red Heart Soft and these two, and you can see what they do. So this one is a recommended um, size hook for it and see how you can see through it a little bit. And then I used one size down on this one and see how it's a little bit more dense. It's also the nature of this yarn. It's gonna have a bit of a loft to it, which is that kind of fuzziness. And it has a really nice drape to it. And if I stretch and pull it out, you can kind of see some of that stitch work there. This would make a fantastic baby blanket um, for keeping warm and also soft. Um, this one would be uh, even better in the summer, especially if you're making it into a baby blanket, just because it's really breathable. Um, you know, so if you wanna have something that kind of lays gently over um, like sort of you're creating a canopy um, for a kiddo or something you don't want it to get too hot you can do that or you can even go way up um, jump up from the five millimeter up to so this is a five you could um, go up to an eight so I'm gonna actually stitch this out and the videos are gonna be in the link down below and we'll pop in some of the links from time to time Joanna's um, uh, may or may not be joining me today. I, I haven't looked to see if she's jumped on yet, but um, the links for um, So the scarf video link uh, will show you how to do the increases if you want to change colors You can look at the main crochet uh, baby blanket link uh, If you want to make a hat, we've got a hat one if you want to add on the crocheted border We actually have a separate video for the border and uh, let's see, which one, one do you want to do? Do you guys want to see first this one? Um, if I increase this hook size, two sizes, to see what that would look like? Give me a thumbs up real quick if you haven't already. If you haven't, go ahead and hit like a heart icon or something or type something in the comments and let me know. Um, hi, Sharon, I see you jumping on. She finally caught me live. <laughs> I'm glad you're here. Uh, oh, Edang, thank you. You like it? <laughs> Can I link to my shawl pattern anyway? Yes, the links are gonna be in the description and when you get off the video, if you haven't been able to see it yet, you'll see it after. And then we'll drop in some links here in a minute. Um, I can drop in, I'm not sure if I can comment on here. Let's see. You guys can also super chat and it'll highlight it to me even better um, if you want me to, if you wanna get my attention. Um, it's not letting me comment on the video so I can't drop the link here. Gosh, why not? Um, Nope, I can't. Okay, sorry, I was looking at my controls. Okay, do you guys want to see this? Okay, I'm getting some thumbs up. Yes, go up two sizes. Okay, I'm actually going to go from a five to an eight, so that's actually three millimeter sizes. Uh, so this is a H hook to an L hook. And let's go, sorry, let me get this facing right. I'm right-handed. Um, you'll have to kind of do the mirror thing because I won't be able to flip the video for you if you're left-handed but you'll get the idea. So right now I'm just gonna show you mid pattern and if you wanna know how to start the pattern, you can go to my Marshmallow Crochet Baby Blanket um, video that we'll have linked later. I'm gonna zoom in on this one, make sure it's focused. Okay, so um, what I've got is on the top of my stitches here, you can see that this little thing here is kind of angled where it's like taller here and shorter here. So at the top, you know what, I'm gonna have to zoom out because it's really blasting my color. Okay, I don't want, I want you to be able to see it clearly without it getting all fuzzy. Okay. 
All right, so here is this first little chain on top from that from a double crochet, and then we have another chain on top from the second double crochet, and then here is a single crochet. I'm going to go into that space for the single crochet, not the space in between these two things. So like not down here for this bigger open spaces where it starts leaning over, but we're going to go into the top of this single crochet, and I'm going to pull through one and then I'm gonna yarn over and pull through two, and that gets me a single. So the textured stitch to make one little marshmallow is single crochet and then double, double. So we're gonna yarn over, go into that same stitch, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. That's a one double crochet. Then we're gonna do the next one. You know what, is this too light for you? Let's switch it up. I've got another eight millimeter that's darker. Okay, this is still the same as this one. It's just gonna be easier to see. The contrast just wasn't enough. Okay, so we're gonna yarn over, go into the hole here, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over, pull through two. So that's a second double crochet. Then we're gonna go to the next one. Okay, there's no chaining in between. You don't have to do that. Like if you were doing a granny square or something, you're not, uh, not just not a shell with a chain in between. It simply just leans over. So one row is gonna lean to the right and then you flip it and then it's gonna lean to the right again, but it's causing it to go the different direction. So we're gonna do a single crochet and a double and a double. Okay, and I'm just starting at the, the end of this row here so that I can turn, I can show you the turning and finish up another row and we'll get to blast through this a little bit faster. Uh, if you wanna know how I did the width that I'm working on right now, the width uh, that I did was like 14 chains. Um, so you could make a little scarf in, in that size. It was 14 chains plus three. The stitch repeat on this uh, is in the blog it's a two plus a multiple of two plus three, and I'll talk to you about starting chains in a moment. So now I've done this last one. Okay, so when it comes to the very last stitch, you actually just single crochet. Um, and this is gonna be a little tight, so I'm just gonna go through that whole thing rather than go in between that stitch. And that's okay too if you just can't get in there and it's like too tight from the chain turning chain. So I'm gonna go up and we're just gonna single crochet in that very last stitch. Okay, and now we're going to chain one, two, all right, and then we're going to turn. And then we to do two double crochets in this first stitch here, okay? So, so at the end of our um, turning chain is where we go. I'm going to go down into there, oops, pull through, double crochet, Go in and double crochet. Now, if you've never crocheted before and you're just seeing through this for, this for the first time, don't worry, I know I'm going fast. <laughs> this is meant to be sort of a second thing when you do the first blanket, then you wanna step up to the next or you have questions, you can come back here for a referral, okay? So um, I can do a, a slower stitch here in a minute, but I wanna get across to show you. Okay, so now that I've gone over, I'm gonna go all the way over and I'm gonna pull this apart. So when you're first learning, you may have to pull it apart. So I'm gonna pull apart these stitches. You can see this is where it was leaning and there's this big triangular space here. I'm not going in there. It's the little bitty triangular space. So little bitty, not big bear, but little bitty. <laughs> Goes in that stitch, it's the top of this one. So you're skipping over one, two chains into the third chain spot right there. Single crochet, double crochet into the same spot. Do, 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 do. Yarn over, pull through two. All right, one more double crochet, yarn over, go through, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and then keep going. All right, I'm gonna just do this a little faster just to get us through. Do, 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 do. I haven't worked with this yarn with this hook before, so I'm like catching it on everything. Okay. And then, yeah, one, two, okay. 
hopefully I'm not going off screen. I'm not looking at my monitor, so I can't tell if I'm going off screen here. Okay. And if you get to the point where you're like, I don't know uh, if I've done two or three, uh, you can come here after you've gotten a stitch through and then kind of feel and you can feel that there's a one, two, three sets of little knots. If you only feel two of them, do one more double crochet. All right, so go through here, single, because you're gonna pull through, and yarn over and pull through, double, one double, and then the two double. Come on. It's not cooperating with me. Hold on, let me get some more yarn. Okay, again, if you're just joining me, uh, I'm working on um, going up a size, so it's gonna be looser with my uh, crochet hook that I'm working with now versus the rest of my sample. The first part of the sample was worked with an H hook, a US H hook, or five millimeter, and I am upping the size to an eight millimeter. Now, if you wanna make a, a sample and you just like wanna test out different, um, different, different hooks with your yarn, I suggest doing um, probably at least four or five rows in one size and then test the next hook size up. And if you need to add like a little piece of paper and pin it on with the removable stitch marker or something like that to, to show you that this is this size, this is this size, you know, I use this one first, I use this one next, do that uh, so you can remember. Especially if you like doing this blanket over and over then, um, cause like I make this particular one for a particular charity. I do it over and over cause it's just, people love it. So um, I like to, have reference points for stuff that I make all the time. I'm like, okay, where's my go-to? Of course, I know that I, I use this one particular for that one. So I, I bought this in, so I know what this is for. It's for Embrace Grace. I know this is my hook and I use it with this particular yarn over here. So, all right. So again, you double crochet twice um, after that turning chain. When you turn, let me go through one more row of this uh, so you can really see what this change looks like. I did the end of one row and then I now I've done a complete row. I'm on my, technically my second, but you should be able to tell the difference in the rest of the sample. Your work will grow on you, but also it will, um, uh, I mean, it's gonna remain basically the same with because I started with something else, but it will be wider if I had started my chain with this. The first row though, if you get really big with your hook, the first row or two is gonna look real wonky because I was trying one earlier um, that I'll show you in a second that seemed like, oh my gosh, I think I'm doing too much. <laughs> but after a while, I was like, oh, this is gonna be a nice little lacy looking shawl. Lace just has holes and you're just creating holes. Oh, lost my yarn over. Let's go in the silence. Kristen's been talking a while. <laughs> People like to hear me talk like to hear me talk. People who don't are like, shh, be quiet. Oh, come on. Do, do, do. This particular one, I think if I was gonna make this into a lacy baby blanket, first of all, it wouldn't be for an infant. Um, and I would put a border on it, for sure, on this one. 
you can do it in the same one, maybe in a tighter um, hook size to really have this nice finished edge on it. Because it's going to be loose on the top where the chains are, the top edge of your stitch. The sides and the bottom on this particular stitch pattern are very, um, they're non-dimensional. They're, they're very straight and thin edged. I don't know if that's a, a thing, but that's what I call it. <laughs> I'll show you what I'm talking about here in a second on this other uh, sample. You'll be able to see it clearly. Let me get through this row. Be sure and uh, ask your questions if you're on here live and you have a particular question, um, write it on there and I will address it. Okay, let's do my turning chain. All right, so you can see how it's kind of grown. See that? And it's gotten, it's gotten much bigger and lofty. Okay, so this this part was the old stitch here, and then half of this side here over, I've got two rows of it. So you can really see what this is gonna look like. Sorry if it's glary, but it really opens it up. So um, this would be um, a really pretty stitch to do, um, like I was saying earlier, a cover up in the summer, um, or a lacy shawl or a baby blanket or something like that. Um, it's just got a lot of texture and I don't worry if it has like this messy look to it. In fact, let me show you one that I consider kind of messy, fun, and pretty. <laughs> this is what I call messy pretty. The, um, <laughs> the Bernat blanket yarn or any kind of blanket yarn like this, um, especially if you're a beginner, it's very forgiving because it has high texture on it. And if you aren't good at making your stitches like really pretty and you know, it can be bumpy. I especially made sure that this looked a little bumpier than normal. Um, see how it's kind of pump popping out. Um, so this is the one that I do all the time and I've incorporated some stripes in. This is the one that got real popular um, when I did the pattern. I've been doing this pattern. Um, this is my pattern since 2012, but I think I did the video back in 2014. So it's been, it's four years old and people really like it. So this was this particular one this is how this one's worked and I gotta tell you this hook is like butter <laughs> so that is how this one operates here Let's see how that's how it normally is so I saw a couple people jump on so I just wanted you to see that um, if you go to the beginning of this when we get out of here you'll see so this one I started with an H hook I went up to um, and the H is a five millimeter here is the eight millimeter Okay, now I want to show you what it is when I go to a, um, what did I say that was, 10 millimeter? Oh, I don't have the thing anymore. Um, that's working with this hook here, which is really big. So this is the same Karen cake. This is the cotton cake. So instead of working with the recommended hook or the three times the size, I went to one even bigger for a really lacy look. Look at that. So there's that. Okay, now I wanna show you the characteristics of this stitch so that you know um, if you wanna add something to it. So, um, okay, someone's asking what size for the baby blanket yarn. Okay, so this video is to show you that you do not have to do the yarn and hook that I showed in my other video. You can do this stitch on anything. I mean, it's the same with any stitch work you can play with it. Um, but I wanted to show you what it looks like in other yarns. So the original video is using an eight millimeter L hook and a number six blanket yarn. Okay. So it's a bulky, a super bulky weight blanket yarn. And this is what it works up like. And you can add in stripes and I've got the video for that. I've got also got a video for adding a border. And that's what I want to talk about right now. So for the moment, let's talk about this sample. So this sample I did much bigger so you could really see it. If you want a nice thin baby blanket, with a worsted weight yarn, this one's a really good way to go. This is using an H hook, which is five millimeter. Uh, you could also use a um, an I hook. So either the, what's recommended on the ball band. So when you come over here and you look at your band, your ball band, it's going to say in the crochet area, it's gonna say a recommended hook. Now this is a general guide, okay? So this general guide recommends an I, nine hook, which is a 
5.5 millimeter on this particular one. I either use a size that's on here or I go a size down, in which case I did that for this one. I'm using an H hook. All right, which is a five millimeter. It's it's half a millimeter smaller. Okay, here's the characteristic. So the top edge, you can see this nice chained edge. It kind of, you know, it's pillowy and stuff. It's real pretty. But the side and the side and the bottom are very flat. They're more rigid looking. So you've got this pretty scalloped edge. Now, if you don't like frills and you don't want the edging, then just leave it like this. And it's it's kind of minimal how frilly this edge is. But if you wanna add a little bit of extra um, fluff, <laughs> then I've got a video for how to do the corners. So we'll have the link on there for you. And you just simply finish your row and then you start working on the um, the edging. So you've already got one edge, right? So then you would just turn and start going this way. Okay, so you, you make a corner and you turn and you make another corner and go all the way around. And when you get up here, you still complete one more row and finish out your corner and join it. And then you can even, um, I know somebody who, uh, she likes to make blankets for the charity that I do, and she'll do a solid blanket or stripes, and then she'll go back with um, a totally different color, an accent color, and do three rounds of the corner, okay? And then that way it's got this really nice thick border and an offset um look on there. So it's really, really cool. Um, yeah, so that's what that looks like. That's an H hook. Now I want to talk about this one. This is Red Heart. It's a wrap. This is a size one. This is a super fine yarn. It recommends a D3 hook or a 3.25 millimeter. So we're really going down here. So versus the, what we did up top on here with an eight millimeter, we're going down several. We're going down five millimeters down to a three. And this is what this one looked like when I was trying it and showing increasing. So instead of ending with a single crochet, let me see if I can put something white underneath here. You can really see. Yeah. Anyway, this is with, um, instead of ending in a single crochet, you actually finish out the complete end of it. You can, you finish out the, um, the stitch with two more double crochet and then chain and then make your row. So you're not actually um, finishing with a shortening of it, okay? So to end all of these, you actually finish that row with a single crochet and then go up. So this one would keep going out. So this would make a very pretty shawl and this very delicate yarn, and then it'll slowly color change for you. Um, and then I would actually, um, I'm thinking I'd like to frog this and go up say to an H hook, which is higher than recommended, and make it lacy looking like this one, right? And then I can get more use out of my ball and it's a bigger stitch. So what do you guys think about that? Give me some comments and um, you know, maybe we can work up a pattern with that and show you what it looks like in it. Here's, here's what it looks like when it's pulled apart. So this would be closer to what it would be um, seeing something a little bit more lacy in it. Let's get the white on here, look at that. You like that? <laughs> Vamala, is that how you say your name? I think that's a good idea, she says. <laughs> Thank you so much. All right. Oh, lovely from Scotland, Annette says. Thank you so much. Um, Sherry says, I have a difficulty with keeping my work from curling up. Sherry, are you having difficulty in knit or crochet? If, you, if it's crochet, um, it usually shouldn't curl, but sometimes it does. Um, this particular one is curling just a tad. If you see, it's kind of curling a little bit right here. Now I can block it. I do have a video on how to wet block. You can wet block. Um, you can even slightly steam it if you wanted to. You gotta be real careful careful when you do some steaming. Um, and I've got a little bit of steaming in a video that I just recently did. But if you will add a border onto your crochet, it will help. Okay, Sherry does crochet. If you will, um, you can try blocking it if you like it just how it is. Um, it's probably your tension. That's the tightness that you're working when you're working with the yarn and you're pulling on it. If you're just naturally tighter, then um, I would I would do a I would just add a border around and just kind of like <laughs> you could just kind of 
make sure you're relaxed when you're doing it. Maybe not do it during like a high stress point. And then your tension will relax and uh, the way you're holding your yarn. Make sure uh, everyone, when you're working with your yarn, put it in an area that's free of um, stress and strain on the yarn. So you wanna put it in a bowl or um, if you've got a bag next to you, that's fine, but make sure it's not getting constantly hung up on something. And if you're constantly having to pull it to get it out of there, um, pull out several yards at a time and you can even sort of loosely put them on your lap or on the side of you. And then that way when you're pulling, um, the yarn is free from really heavy strain and tension. And then when you get to further along, you can pull some more yarn out. Um, if you find that pulling from the center of the ball gives you too much tension, then pull from the outside of the ball. If you do pull from the outside of the ball, I recommend definitely putting it in a round container. And I say round because like say a bowl, it will roll around and stuff. But if you put it in a box or something, it's just gonna go boom, 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 and hit everywhere. So yeah, that's the best thing to do. Nanette agrees. <laughs> Thank you. Um, oh, Vimalia, Vimalia sa Vimala says, the shawls look nicer if they're lacy. <laughs> yes, I agree. I really love lacy shawls. Um, you do have to watch your tension digital prompt, Pommy. Yeah, I understand. Um, yeah, Lorma likes it uh, pretty, uh, likes it tighter and lacy. I mean, um, lacier and looser. Yeah, I, I definitely do as well. Um, I do like some of those garter stitch shawls, but I really appreciate a nice lacy one. Um, not too lacy that I'm always going to get caught on things, but um, yeah, for sure. I think this would make a lovely lace, especially in this yarn. This is the first time I've been using this Red Heart. Um, it's a wrap. This is not, you know, <laughs> this is not a sponsored video. You can see I've got Red Heart and Karen, uh, Karen Cakes from Yarn Inspirations. I mean, I've got all kinds of stuff here, but... Um, it's really nice. I like it. I actually bought a blue one. It fades in and out from like this kind of color. And um, I wish I had it sitting here. Ooh, I might. Hang on. Do y'all want to see? Do y'all want to see the other color? Um, let me know if you want to see the other color because um, I can I can reach. I think I can get up for a second and reach it. Um, oh my goodness. Digital Palm says... <laughs> My problem is I have four Pomeranians and they jump in my lap regularly. Well, honey, I can't help that. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. Because <laughs> then they might get caught on all the extra. <laughs> okay, you guys want to see the yarn? Okay, hold on. Let me go reach it. Hold on. All right. It's still in Michael's bag. I went shopping yesterday. Um. Anyway, look at that. Isn't that pretty? So it's almost that color here on the outside. And then it fades uh, to a lighter and then back to a darker. Uh, really pretty. So the names on this one, I know someone's going to ask me. You may have already asked and I didn't see you. Hang on. This one is, oh, Romance. <laughs> My Romance. <laughs> That's Romance from It's a Wrap and then Red Hearts. It's a Wrap. This color, oh, Documentary. So Documentaire, Documental. Okay. Hey, how do you say romance in the other one? Oh, ooh, is romance the same word in three languages? Mm. Uh -huh -huh. Love in any language. <laughs> oh my goodness, how many yards is it? Oh, thank you, good question. Um, I am working on the answer, hold on. This is the first time I really studied this ball band. Um, it's, oh, it's 1100 yards or 1006 meters uh, seven ounces and it's a 200 gram. So it's a pretty big ball. So 200 gram ball. So 1100 yards. It's 50% acrylic and cotton. So I picked that also because I thought it would be a really good summer shawl. So, um, yeah, work that up. Um, do y'all want to see me work on this one? I could make this one a little bit bigger. Let's see. Laura <laughs> says, wow, it's lovely. Oh, you guys love it. Oh, I'm so glad. <laughs> love the blues. Okay, yes, please do. All right, let's see what this looks like. Okay, oh, where is my, shoot. Sorry about that. I got a phone call coming in and it uh, paused my video for a second. Um, sorry, this was camouflaged. Look, <laughs> y'all know, if you know me for very long, you know my favorite color is chartreuse and it was hiding in my chartreuse yarn. <laughs> uh, 
gosh. Oh my gosh, I'm such a dork. Okay, so let's go up from the 3.125 millimeter D hook to the 5.0 millimeter uh, hook. And I'm gonna frog it back to the turning chain. Okay. I'm gonna pull this out a little bit, hold on. Pardon me, I'm doing a little surgery. Okay. Okay, there we go. I've said, I've said okay, like, how many times? Such a dork. Okay. <laughs> Keep doing it. Oh, okay. Do you, guys, do you guys have the video feed? Someone just said lost video feed. Yeah, we're, we're, we should be back. Okay, let me not start yet. The screen went black because I had a, um, I had a phone call come in. I don't, I can't, I can't go airplane mode because, um, well, because I'm, I'm using Wi-Fi. All right. So hopefully you guys are going to be able to see this. I'm going to go ahead and move it. There's a delay on comments versus what I'm doing. Okay. So I'm going to, uh, yarn over, I'm going to do two chains and turn yarn over, go into this first stitch here. Oh, hold on a second. I've got to get some water. My mouth is really dry. Oh, okay. Not yet. Oh, you guys can't see me? Wait a minute. You can't see me? Shoot. All right, let me flip the screen. Hang on. Ah! Can you guys see me? Joanne, if you are on here, call me real quick and I'll ignore your phone call and see if it like triggers it to come back. I've checked my camera. Hold on. Hold on. Can you hear me though? I'm sorry, you guys. Video has gone since the call. Joanne, call me real quick. Are we back? Are we back? Oh, you can hear me. Papa, can you hear me? Papa, can you see me? <laughs> whoop, whoop. That was so weird. Thank you for calling me, Joe. And it's like super bright because I leave those lights on when I'm trying to crochet. Okay, I will flip it now. All right, thank you so much for your patience with me. And if you're on the replay, you've got a lot of patience for watching all these bubbs. Okay, let me flip it. Okay. <laughs> get the light back in here oh my gosh okay let me start this over <sighs> there's no business like show business <laughs> all right we're going to begin by turning chain so we chain two turn it yarn over two double crochet Pardon me, these are small stitches to get through in the bigger hook right now. So I'm gonna do two double crochet. Oh, you can't see it. I'm not even on camera. Hold on, babes. Okay, sorry. Let me, I just called y'all babes. <laughs> okay, hold on. Oh, what a day. <laughs> All right, don't worry about the turning chain. I'm just gonna keep going. That's, it's live, people. It's live. You get what you get. You don't throw a fit. That's what my kids say. <laughs> oh. oh, my gosh. Oh, that's tight. Trying to go up from the other. I'm going to have to start this one over, though, like, for real in this larger one if we like it. Because I'm pretty sure we will. So I'll have to start this um, pattern over again. This will be really nice. You'll hear that airplane. This is why it takes me so long to do a video. I'm in a flight path. I don't think it's as noticeable when I'm doing a live video, but when I'm doing a um, a pre-recorded one, I always end up stopping. Okay. 
it's harder going into this row because of the change in hook size for sure. Oh, okay, while you while you guys are watching me talk amongst yourselves, I'm going to ask you for help. What is the next show that I should catch on Netflix? <laughs> because I'm like running out of series to watch while I'm knitting. So tell me your favorite Netflix to Stitch Flicks to. <laughs> And go. Because I'm going to check this back later. I'm, I'm excited to <laughs> read your thoughts. Oh, did I do that? Okay. One, two. I may have to add an extra one here. Because I can't see it. These are... Believe it or not, I worked some of the... I got my hair done this morning, uh, cut and color, and I worked on several of these small samples. Not the blue one, but I worked on several of these samples while I was sitting in the chair. <laughs> she's like... But there was a lady next to me. She's like, you're really being productive. <laughs> like, well, I gotta have samples to show people. Okay, so I'm at the end where, oops, am I off camera again? Let me scoot out. It's hard for me to tell what I'm, what's in frame. Okay, the call of the midwife, what? I just was watching the, the season finale of When Calls the Heart. Oh my goodness. Okay, here's my, okay, this is the one where I normally would go in single crochet. So I'm just gonna go down here and I'm going to double crochet, double crochet after that single crochet. So I'm gonna continue on in that stitch pattern and not finish off the row as usual. Okay. And then chain one. And two, this next row should be easier because they're all looser stitches. So I'm going to go into this first chain here. Double crochet. So the first one in the row is two double crochet at the end of that turning chain. Jump over with a single into that first spot there. Double into the same spot. Double again. And you could change it up and do two, um, uh, or do a third double if you wanted to, or even really lay it over and do a triple and get an even longer bump there. Am I missing any gossip? I can't like, I can't read it. I looked up Bulgo and I saw the call of the midwife. Did somebody, um, did y'all comment? Did anybody watch the last one for When Calls the Heart? <laughs> oh my gosh. Dear Darker. Spoiler alert. We need like a whole um, knitting podcast on like, like just stitch flexing, man. Like, what are you working on and what are you watching? <laughs> All right, I missed. I went to the. I I I, I didn't go to the right spot, so I have to start that over. Oh, 
Let me get through a couple rows and then we'll see how lacy this looks. Thankfully it's small. That's why I did it small so I could make changes. I've been watching some uh, historical drama series. Um, I guess they call them historical fiction. I don't know because they're supposed to be historically based, but, you know, conversations and stuff they make up. And so I've been watching this one and I'm like, oh, my gosh, I wish that there wasn't so like <laughs> so much <laughs> showing the affairs and like literally what's happening. Like, I love them, but those scenes are like, uh, avert your eyes. Like, I just got through watching two seasons of Versailles and I'm like, I need to wash my eyes. <laughs> oh my gosh too much information Kristen I know someone's gonna say it so I'll just say it for you all right now I'm at the end of this one do two more double crochets because I like to see some of that history stuff sort of come to life and in the places it was supposed to have happened and it's kind of cool I think that's interesting all right into that I just increased and now I'm gonna chain up one two and let's look at it no look how pretty and lacy we've got a couple of rows in now that's pretty so before i was like trying to pull it out to make it look like that now it actually looks like that it's kind of pillowy and soft so um i would um if, if you were going to do this you could certainly keep your one edge lacy but you might want to go around it and um and do a lacy edge um, to match on all these sides because they're gonna be rigid and you know harder. Um, and I want to say my cast on in this just so you know if you want to start one. I uh, I say cast on like I'm knitting. <laughs> my starting chain was ten plus three, um, so it's not very big. It puts like a couple of these little stitches on here, and then it sort of turns to the side a little bit when I do the increases. So like that's why my uh, that's why this tail is coming out sort of sideways and not down on the edge. So you could even start it with say like six or even four and then do your um, three. But I really wouldn't start with just the one. You might want to just do try six or something. Six or eight. Um, anyway, do you guys like that? I hope you do. Um, and then when you're done with the row, I mean, once you've gone all the way around, you just like pull it out. You just cut it and pull it out. I mean, that's that's the beauty of crochet. <laughs> you can just yarn over one time, pull it out, and uh, weave in your tails. So pretty, everyone says. Well, I'm so glad that you guys enjoy it. Remember, I'm working with the yarns I'm working with. If you join me late, I'm working with It's a Wrap, which is a number one. Here is the other color. So we got Romance and Documentary. Really pretty number one weight. Then we have um, number four weight, which are these right here. We've got um, Karen Cakes Cotton Cakes and then Red Heart Soft. Um, this is color turquoise. This Karen Cake color is Garden Oasis or a Oasis Jardin or Jardin Oasis. Um, and then we have Hollyhock. Or Tremier, I think that's how you say it. Hollyhock is the color on this. This is really pretty. My, my daughter loves this. This is her favorite. This is my favorite. She says, can I have this when you're done? I said, yep. <laughs> and then this one is the Chartreuse. Um, it's Bernat Baby Blanket Yarn in the color Lemon Lime. Lemon Lime. And I've worked with um, this 10 millimeter hook was the really big one to get this one if you didn't miss that earlier. Um, so I've got a L hook which made this one or an eight millimeter. And this one right here was a five. The beginning of this was a five. And then we did the L, um, the eight millimeter or L hook at the top of this one. And then we had this one that started with the, um, 3.25 and then we ended it with the five so that is what we worked on today yay oh hang on let me flip this hang on a second let me turn off this light so you're not like i'm not blasting you oh, there's my best messy room ah! 
You saw my mess. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm going to get to some of your questions. Uh, yeah, I got a couple minutes before I got to head out the door to get kiddos. Let me see if I've got, let me zoom through and read questions. Uh, uh, just a second while I, ooh, call the midwife. Call the midwife. Call the midwife. Oh, I watched that show. Yeah, I love that show. I love that show. I have, with the original girl, I'm trying to remember her name, with the dark brown hair that she went away. I loved her. Um, yeah, I wish she was still on it. Oh, dare, ooh, okay, okay, I'm reading. Oh, bye, bye, uh, Pamala. She said she went off to sleep. Uh, made coffee, anyone want some? Ooh, I would love some. Mmm. <laughs> Norma's got my coffee back. That's my water, though, of course. Um, <laughs> oh, man, some good ones. Okay, I'm going to come back and um, and read this later. Oh. Uh, Gilmore Girl. Okay, don't hate me. I, I'm not a Gilmore Girls fan. My sister is. I, I can't. I can't. I'm not going to hate on it, but I can't. Digital Palm, you should watch uh, I, Claudius with Derek Jacoby, Masterpiece. Oh, I love Masterpiece Theater. Set in the height of Roman times. Oh, okay. I'll check that out. Very pity. Yes, Nanette, I do have free patterns. Go to goodknitkisses.com. If you click on the link for the baby blanket, that'll land you on my website. Just browse around. If you like an article, hey, you guys, if you have questions on articles, will you do me a favor? First of all, if you like it, there's a love button on our website at the end of an article. If you scroll way down to wherever the author is, whoever wrote it, if it was me or Joanne or Carol or whoever, there's a little bitty, uh, a little bitty heart and you can click it and give us some love and then you can write a comment. Tell us if you enjoyed it. Do you have a question? Do you have a cool comment to make? Let us know. Uh, let's see. <laughs> this was fun. I'm so glad, Patricia. I'm glad you guys had a good time. Uh, Digital Palm, wonder how many uh, It's a Wrap you would need to make a summer shawl. Good question. If you go up on your hook, I'm guessing... Um, I'm guessing you could get, you could get a summer shawl out of this. I, I want to say, let me see if there's a, let me look real quick and see. There might be a pattern in here. Usually there's patterns inside these ball bands, but let's see. I'm not seeing a pattern. Um, go to redheart.com and they probably have a pattern, um, on the website for it. Um, and it'll tell you. So you could get a good guesstimate. Um, I like to do that. I like to go see what patterns are available and kind of how much yarn they're suggesting and what hook size for that pattern. And then kind of get a gauge, get an idea. And then um, a gauge swatch really, I know it's a dirty word, especially in crochet, people don't like gauge swatches, but it's a really good idea to um, learn how to make one. And I do, we do have an interactive calculator that can help you figure out how much yarn you need if you'll do a little swatch with the yarn in the hook that you're using and um, measure it and weigh it on a gram scale, like a little postal scale or a kitchen scale. And you can um, determine how much yarn you need. So it's a really handy thing, especially when you're shopping, you're like, I don't want to buy way too much and I certainly don't want to buy not enough because that's depressing so anyway I'm so glad you guys came on today please subscribe if you haven't already hit that bell icon and um thanks for joining me today where we stitch our love and love our sti stitches at good knit kisses I hope you have a great day and happy knitting and crochet join me next week on Friday at two o'clock bye everyone ah.